All right, everybody, this is Ross. Today we're gonna to talk about strawberries, and in particular, we're gonna talk about one strawberry in particular that I think is going to blow your minds and make you wanna grow this strawberry. And in fact, that's the whole goal of this video. I wish I could, for every one of you guys watching right now, is grab you by the shoulders, shake you, and then say, grow this strawberry. Like, I want this message to go in one ear and stay in this this noggin of yours, because what I'm about to tell you guys is going to change the way you think about strawberries forever. What if I told you there was a strawberry that tastes better than any other strawberry you could grow? It's soft and melts in your mouth, so it has an amazing texture. It's not bothered by any critters, no birds, no squirrels, Nothing in your yard even will know it exists. And the only thing that even does slightly bother it is slugs. And the slug pressure on this particular strawberry is very low. And it also produces strawberries throughout the entire season. Um, it may stop for a period of time, but it basically is an ever-bearing type. And so is not affected as as easily by the day length, and it will just continue producing. I've also already harvested my first crop of strawberries off of it in the last five or seven days. This is the first fruit of the year in my yard in the Philadelphia area, and I'm growing every fruit you can grow. I'm growing strawberries of different types. I'm growing raspberries, blackberries, every berry you can think of, honey berries, aronia berries, gooseberries, currants, yosted berries, persimmons, pawpaw, agumi, apples right here, you know, different types of grapes, uh, figs I have planted next to me. It's the earliest fruit you can grow. And it also produces a lot of these fruits. Well, what is it that I'm talking about? What is the strawberry that I'm mentioning? It's actually an alpine strawberry. It's not your typical strawberry that you see at the store. This is a strawberry that is smaller in size, softer, and way more flavorful and fragrant. They also melt in your mouth. And you guys know, if you've seen other strawberries that I've grown in the past, you know that I really love the Mara de Bois strawberry, which is a French strawberry that is well regarded as one of the best tasting strawberries in the world. And I honestly and truly believe that. However, Alpine strawberries are in a whole different class of flavor and texture. Let me see if I can find one for you guys because I've basically eaten them all and I have kind of waited to do this video a little bit too long. Let me see if I can find one. Here's one down here that is actually rather small, a little smaller than maybe the average. As the plants get older, I just transplanted these in over here into this bed. Here's a good one right here. But as they get older, they're more like this size. So maybe about the size of a, a quarter, slightly smaller than a quarter. And you can see when I press, press on this, like I didn't have to apply much pressure and it's already like giving to that pressure. It is just extremely soft and it melts right in your mouth like a piece of chocolate. They're so amazing when you eat them that you just can't even believe that you're eating them. I showed my brother, his girlfriend, these strawberry plants yesterday and they couldn't believe what they were eating. I mean, they really are that good. And in terms of all the fruits I grow, they are one of the best tasting um, without a doubt. Now I've even just taken my, you know, my words here and followed them because not only have I planted that bed over there last fall with those plants, um, after growing a clump of them for about three or four years, I decided to dig up that clump and separate them all out because over time, these strawberry plants, they clump, they don't run. They're different than other strawberry uh, plants that you guys might grow. And so 
I spread those out over there and divided them and I had a lot of plants and I was able to actually over many years, because the seeds fall to the ground and germinate, I was able to actually have a lot of plants to spread out. This bed right here is where I'm growing a lot of my peppers and eggplants and I've always grown my peppers and eggplants here. But I've decided actually I started a whole tray of these seeds. I got them from Baker Creek. I think it's White Soul is the variety. Germinated them. They do take a while to germinate and they're not easy to germinate if you guys are not really great at growing seeds. You have to surface germinate them, cover them. They need light and they definitely need uh, consistent moisture. So a spray bottle definitely helps over the course of about two or three weeks at the right temperature. They'll come up and I started a whole tray of them and then I just transplanted them in this morning. We watered the bed here and these plants are basically gonna be on their way to essentially colonize this whole raised bed. Uh, you can see them down here. They do need a little bit of food. Uh, they've been in that, those cells I've had them in actually for a little too long and probably over watered them. So there's a lot of leaching that occurred, but we filled this whole raised bed. And so, you know, the recommended spacing is probably about four inches. You can go a little further because eventually what happens is, as I said, they'll clump and they'll spread that way. And so I'm kind of, you know, putting my money where my mouth is here, not only telling you guys to plant more of them or to plant them at all, but I'm also planting more myself. And I've actually gotten rid of my favorite strawberry, the Mar de Bois strawberry, and I've moved them to another location here across the fence underneath the blueberries uh, where I was growing them many years ago. So this strawberry, again, will blow your mind. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button for me, and I'll see you guys for the next video. Take care.